I'm Guy McKenzie, and I'm here backstage in Exeter, and I'm absolutely delighted to be with John Etheridge. Thank you, John. Hello, Guy. And, and, uh, uh, I was going to, to shake you. your hand, but I see you're, you're mm. in the middle of a... I can shake my <laughs> cup of tea, so... Yeah, I am in the middle of a very necessary cup, cup of tea. tea. John, it, it's, it's very, very nice to meet you, and, but the one thing I really wanted to say was you're a multi-talented guitar player with a huge range of styles, and who or what were your early influences? Well, yeah, okay, I, I slight, I'm not taking issue with that, right. but okay. huge range of styles sounds like I'm a session man. Okay. Well, I'm not, because basically... Mm -hmm. Whatever I do, hopefully it sounds like me, even mm -hmm. if it's got some flavour of the... Obviously, it's got a flavour of the area I'm in. And right. Mm -hmm. I do like to feel that, that I can not blend in, as mm -hmm. it sounds, but contribute in an appropriate way to any environment I'm in mm -hmm. without sounding pretentious, you know. Absolutely. Uh, so I don't come and say, this is what I do, mm -hmm. this is it, mm -hmm. you deal with it. Mm -hmm. I sort of... You know, without saying any of this, I feel like I mm. play according to the situation without being a session man, as it were. Because I'm not a very good session man, actually, to tell you the truth. If somebody says, you know, give me eight bars of funk and give me eight bars of grunge or yeah. something, and I haven't got all the gear out and all that stuff. So. <laughs> but, um, but really, to answer yeah. your question, my influences were mm. immediately almost contradictory, and I suppose mm. that means mm. that's why mm. I am like I am. I mean, mm. Started with Hank Marvin, then it was Django Reinhardt, big mm. time. Right. Then it was Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix, mm. Mm. big time. Then mm. it was John McLaughlin, fairly big time. Mm. And then, so those those people all sort of moulded moulded into the idea was to to fuse it. One of the ideas was to put it together into something. I remember around sort of late sixties, early seventies. We all wanted to do something that was like a combination of Jeff Beck and and mm. and uh, and uh, 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 Tal Farlow or mm. Charlie Christian or something. Okay. Mm. In other words, sort of rock sound with mm. jazz lines. So yeah. I was sort of attempting that, mm. you know, in the mid mid sixties actually, mid late sixties. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, people always go, "Why are you playing so jazzy? Why are you playing yeah. that old?" You know. Yeah. But I was unconsciously trying to do that, and mm. then. My generation of players, which mm. is Ollie House, or Alan Holdsworth, mm. Clockin's a bit older, but mm. we were sort of trying to do that, really. Mm. Sort of ja flowing jazz lines with a rock sound. Mm. And then in, in the early 70s, you actually toured Romania. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to bring I that in. I toured <laughs> Romania. The first tour I ever did was yeah. in Romania. Uh, was it the last time you ever went to Romania, too? Uh, no, actually, I played in Bucharest about... Okay. Years ago, but okay, sorry, but it was just, no, it was the last time I went to Romania under communism because we were thrown out by the, yes. by, the by, by, by the Communist Party because uh, mm. the crowds were going absolutely berserk, right? Mm. And we were there to, to do, uh, I was just in a band supposedly backing a semi cabaret act, right. okay. but because the crowd started going so berserk, we were only about 19 20, so we wound it up as well. Yeah, and I ended up playing behind my head and lying yeah. on the floor, and, <laughs> and the singer was writhing around, and the crowd went more and more potty, <laughs> and the drummer would smash up his drum kit, yeah. like Keith Moon, and yeah. the whole thing was yeah. completely great and out of yeah. order, and the crowd were going mental, huge crowds going yeah. out, and then in the front row was the Communist Party going. <laughs> <laughs> so after two weeks, <laughs> there was an order came from Ceausescu, yeah. who'd just gone back from China actually, because he was known as a liberal. Right. Mm. I mean, students of history mm. might not yeah. know this, but he was known as a liberal. And he, he, really? went, okay. he went to China, mm -hmm. and um, oh, it's just my, I think my pen fell out of my pocket. Oh, okay. um, mm. He went to China and came back mm. and decided all Western influence was corrupting. Right. So the first victims were us, and we put on a plane with no money <laughs> and sent back to London. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> that's a that's a great story. It's hilarious. Mm. Well, I've got plenty of great stories. I'll tell you what. <laughs> can, can I can I just move on because in the mid seventies you you joined Soft Machine, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, seventy five. And, and tell Machine. me about that time because that's uh, well, I uh, you know this Romanian thing. Mm. It's mm. funny, but it was nothing to do with anything. Yeah. I basically, after a number of bands, started playing with the violinist Daryl Way, his yeah. band Wolf. Mm. Right. 
and uh, I sort of got a style mm. together by then, as it were. Mm. And um, the, the um, particularly Chris Welch, who's the melody maker, was very keen on me, and he gave me a lot of very extravagant write-ups. Right. Mm. Write-ups. Write-ups. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Writes up. Writes <laughs> up. Uh, and, uh, and he was great, actually. Mm. I saw him a mm. few years ago, and I said, Chris, mm. my career is thanks to you. And it is, mm. because... He really gave me some extravagant mm. big ups in the Melody Maker, mm. and and those days everybody read the Melody Maker. Yeah. And then I got to know Alan a bit, Alan Holsworth, mm. who right. mm. very sadly passed away recently. Yes. And uh, great, great, I mean, the great man, really, mm. of our generation. Mm. Anyway, he was playing mm. with the Soft Machine at yeah. the time. Yeah. And Darrell Wolf had finished, and yeah. I was in um, another another two things. Yeah. Thanks to Chris Welsh and thanks to the guitar shops yeah. of Shaftesbury Avenue and Denmark Street right. because I used to hang around in them. Yeah. What I used to do, this, is, them this well. is a terrible mission. This is the only kind of mission that only a person after a certain point in his life will make. I used to sit at home, yeah. practice mm-hmm. like crazy for an hour, yeah. hop on the bus, nip down to Denmark Street, walk in, take yeah. the guitar off the wall and go <laughs> like that, hoping to be noticed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I happened to be in there. I'm sure yeah. I wasn't doing when Alan was around, but I, yeah. I knew him vaguely, mm. and I bumped into him. And he said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Nothing. Mm. Not doing anything." Mm. And he took my number, and uh, um, about three weeks later, he left the Soft Machine just right. after the Bundles album had been recorded, right. mm. and went to play in New York with Tony Williams. And he actually okay. phoned me up from, mm. um, and the people who know Alan will know this was quite organised of him. Mm. Actually, mm. he actually phoned me up from. New York and said, "Have they, you know, have they got hold of you yet?" Mm. I said, "No." He said, okay. "Well," so I think he phoned them and said, "Get hold of him." You know? Yeah. So I went and did an audition. They were auditioning very various mm. people. And I think, as I understand it, they were just about to sort of pack it in and get another saxophone player. Oh right. Okay. So I went down and did a thing, and they mm. thought it was okay. So mm. I took over, and I had to do that repertoire, which was very hard work. I mean. Mm. Years later, when I played with Stefan Capelli, people yeah. would say, oh, God, yeah. you're following Django. <laughs> oh, that's what's that like? And I, and I thought, well, no, no, because between Django's death in 1952 and 1978, yeah. when I was mm. playing with Grappelli, mm. he, Grappelli had played with a number of very average, mm. no names, no patrol, but no. very average guitar players, where I'd had to go straight into the soft machine and yeah. do Alan Holsworth's repertoire, which was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Which was um, you know, really challenging. So, so that was more, much more of a challenge than playing with Stephen Grappelli after Jenga. I, I can well believe that. And then, <laughs> and then the Soft Machine went on till about 1984, didn't it? And you, no, not really. It went okay. on to about 78. Right. Okay. And then in 1984, there was a revival for one gig at Ronnie Scott's one week. Okay. Mm. At Ronnie Scott's, that's mm. right. Mm. <coughs> and, um, you know, Carl Jenkins, who was mm. Carl and John, mm. John Marshall, who's playing today. Right. were the kind of leaders of, yeah. of the band and they put it together for 1984 out of the blue yeah. Ronnie Scott said one that the Top Machine do a week right. yeah. and there was lots of talk after that of reforming and going yeah. on nothing happened okay. yeah. nothing happened until 2004 okay. <laughs> that's quite a gap yes that's a huge gap there's yeah. a huge you know yeah. it's like two world wars with an enormous gap in between yeah. Yeah. it is <laughs> but it's the same distance yes it is the same yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, in 1992, you joined Nigel Kennedy's band, didn't you? Yes. I mean, there were quite a few things. Let's, 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 there was let's a lot of things in, in between. between. Yes, I, I mean, 1970, mm-hmm. so while I was with the Soft Machine, I started playing with Stefan Grappelli, which, right. was, which was a very strange, and also gets back to this thing about, you know, you're talking about me having various styles. Yeah. Um, I, I, I <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. At least you didn't that. use the dreaded V word. No, I didn't. No. Versatile. <laughs> no, I didn't. Eclectic is the word <laughs> we like to use. Yeah, um, yeah. Now I got a call out of the blue yeah. to play with Stephen Capelli, which was absolutely bizarre because yeah. I wasn't playing on the jazz scene and nobody knew me on the jazz scene at mm-hmm. all. Um, and what had happened was Soft Machine had been on the television. Mm. And another person I owe a lot of drinks to is a chap called Pete Shade, a vibes player. Right. And he saw us on the telly. Mm. And the day after, he was in the street and Diz Dizzly said, oh, I'm looking for a, another guitar player. There's a name from... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, mm. and, and uh, Pete said to Diz Dizzly, oh, I just saw this bloke on the telly. Mm. So Diz phoned me up <coughs> out of the blue. Yeah. Hello, it's Diz Dizzly. Yeah. 
come and play with Stefan Capelli. And I went, what? This is yeah. ridiculous. This yeah. is absolutely bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he turned up and we um, played a few tunes and he went, okay. So anyway, there's lots of stories there. Mm. But I got to play with Stefan Capelli for five years. So yeah. that was Fantastic. a big deal. And then that came to an end about 81, 82. Mm. That, that, that was the sort of beginning of, for me, the 80s is the sort of mm. the lost decade in a way. I mean, it was such an awful time, politically, personally for me, mm. family things. Mm. No, I was, I was sort of, mm. I was doing okay. I was working. I did stuff mm. in the, uh, the jazz scene and I went over to America and played with Brian Torf and Gil Goldstein. Mm. And, uh, mm. But there was nothing concrete happening. Mm. Uh, and then at the end of the decade, I joined Danny Thompson's band. Right. Mm. <coughs> Whatever. <coughs> um, that was quite a good band tour, mm. well, like with Paul Dunmore, Tony Roberts, and myself. Mm. And then about 93, I did start playing with Nigel Kennedy. I'd played mm. with him before, yeah. but we started playing on a fairly regular basis, which with him, him was not exactly regular, but intermittent. Mm. I was mm. the guy who he played with when he was doing rock and jazz for right. about seven okay. years. Okay. That, that's quite, quite a... Quite, quite a time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. on, it was on and off. It was intermittent, sure. obviously. Mm. I mean, you know, but um, there was a fair amount of stuff we did. Mm. Mm. And I enjoyed it because he's a very inspiring character. Yeah, you know. absolutely. And uh, mm. it was kind of liberating in a way. Mm. Mm. But then in 1998, you set up your own le- record label, didn't you? Well, there again, that sounds good. I set up my own record label yeah. in the sense that I finally... I did make a solo album in... Mm. Uh, called Ash okay. in 1992, which actually yeah. I really do like. And that mm. came out, actually, <coughs> interesting enough, yeah. <coughs> Danny Thompson had a label. Right. And he put out the album on his label. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a... Uh, I like that record. I mean, mm. there again, that's pretty eclectic. Mm. And at the time, eclecticism wasn't that mm. appreciated. I remember the... Mm. the uh, uh, a label in Germany that I, I sort of asked her to put it out. She said, oh, no, no, too many styles. Too many styles, <laughs> right, okay. she said. So in 1998, yeah, I, I, when Grappelli died... Forget that, really. no, no. <laughs> when Grappelli died... It was all right. <laughs> when Grappelli died, I, um, mm. I um, wanted mm. to do a tribute. Yeah. You know. Mm. So mm. I, uh, I got a uh, band together with Chris Garrett, violinist, mm. great violinist, and... Mm. Dave Calvin, Malcolm Crease, and and so I wanted to record, and I just thought, well, I'll I'll do it myself. Right. Mm. And it was the beginning of that era where everybody's doing it themselves. So I, I can't say I formed a record. Mm. I made the album, and then I invented a, mm. which was also going back. We mm. called I called it Dyad Records because in uh, early nineties I've had a duo with Andy Summers from the Police. Oh. And we called ourselves a dyad, oh, right. <laughs> as okay. opposed to a triad, a dyad. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we made a, a nice album called Invisible Threads. Yeah. And we toured for about a year, mm-hmm. just two acoustic guitars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so uh, in uh, 98, yes, I did. I did start putting out albums on my own label. Okay. I was the manager. I was the mm-hmm. treasurer. I was... <laughs> Congratulations. At the office, I had my own cigar, (laughs) which I blew smoke up myself. (laughs) I hear dollars. I hear dollars. Do you know somebody actually said that to me once? Did they really? An agent in New York, when I first appeared with Grappelli, I went up to his office for something. He said, John, I like what I hear. I like what I'm hearing. I hear dollars. I hear dollars. Anything you got, let me know. (laughs) Honestly, is that wonderful? That was very good. (laughs) Isn't that wonderful? I hear dollars. Oh, hilarious. I I, I, I hear dollars. I love it. And she said it absolutely straight with no tongue in cheek at all. I hear dollars. Anyway, I don't think many people have heard dollars. No, I I haven't heard quite like that. But anyway, John, so John you were you were also you also were nominated three times. We talked I politics. Was, before, I was, yes, I we was. We talked politics before we actually started. Yes, I've exactly. just got to tell everybody this. And you were nominated three times for the parliamentary jazz musician of the year. Yes, Award, that's that right, right, absolutely. I picked the post three times, but I was yeah. nominated three times. And I must say, I'm a very egalitarian mm. person. Mm. I'm quite happy to be nominated. I'm very happy to be nominated. Right. Don't mm. mind if I don't win. But I do mm. like to be nominated. It's a nice <laughs> feeling. You go, yeah, okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, so yeah, I was nominated three times Musician of the Year, which is lovely. Well, that's congratulations. Well, that's that's exactly. Say, yeah. Thank you very much. So yeah. can I accept your congratulations? <laughs> 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 it's, it was very, no, really, it's, yeah. it's nice. And everybody yeah. goes, so what? But it, yeah. it's nice. 
Well, it, absolutely, of course it is. And then, of course, at the moment you, you're you're touring. Um, you're touring with with a with um, Vimala Vimala Rao. Rao yes, great singer called Vimala and, Rao. And just before just before you tell me a little bit about that, you're also touring at the end of this year with Soft Machine, aren't yes. you? Yes. Okay. So, so Soft Machine first. We've mm. Starting in 2004, there was a sort of mm. reformation, <coughs> reformation of Soft Machine, and mm. initially called Soft Machine Legacy. And right. it was mm. Elm Dean, Hugh Hopper, yeah. myself, and John Marshall. Right. Mm. And mm. so, um, interesting enough, they had mm. done the thing previously, Softworks, with okay. Alan. Yeah. So it's, it's my fate in life, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to follow up. Anyway, so this yeah. was a lovely band Elm yeah. Dean, mm. Hugh Hopper, myself, John mm. Marshall. Great. Mm. And uh, this, we started recording and playing with a, a manager in, in New York called Leonardo, who put it together, finally achieved mm. what had been talked about for ages, a soft yeah. machine revival. Mm. Well, of course, unfortunately, instead of mm. leaving, as people did in the old days, yeah. they actually left. <laughs> right. they, left the, the, they left the stage permanently. Elton first, then yeah. Hugh. Yeah. So when Elton died, we mm. took in mm. Theo Travis, right. who'd never been in the soft machine, but mm. he had... Pedigree with Gong and right. a mm. big interest in mm. our type of music. Right? <coughs> and Hugh, unfortunately, went as well. But Roy mm. Babington, of course, was in the band in 1975 that I was in. Right. Mm. <coughs> so that <coughs> we've made we've made four or five albums. Mm. Uh, that continued as um, mm. sort of the legacy. But now we've everybody said, "Well, to call it Soft Machine." And so mm. what mm. I've said in the publicity mm. is, it's the 1975 version. So John Marshall, Roy Babington, myself, okay, mm. were core of the of the 1975 band, you know, right? Mm. And then we've got Theo added on. Okay. Mm. So in that sense, it, it's, it's it's that issue about well, it hasn't got King mm. in it, and got well, fair enough. Mm. So I, I say it's the mm. in, in, in the or we say it's the 75 version. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing seeing that. Yes, yeah, great. Um, and but, then yeah, and then Vimala. I mean, yeah. I've, I I. A couple of years ago, I started this duo with, mm. um, and mm. I really like the idea of it basically mm. being a duo, mm. <coughs> guitar and voice with mm. this wonderful mm. uh, singer Vimal Laro, yeah. who's yeah. extraordinarily dynamic and uh, yeah. mm. brilliant artist, you know. Mm. And so we do a lot, and I want to do more. Actually, I, I'm actually, I have not done any proactive hustling, right, mm. for a long time, but I'm going to do it. For this, okay. I'm well, doing it for this because, yeah. you know, by proactive I mean getting myself on the phone and going, "Oi, give <laughs> us a gig, eh? <laughs> yeah. Look, if you don't give us a gig, I've got friends. <laughs> that and, sort of thing. And that this sort is of the way lane. to get gigs. That's yeah. a, uh, well, I could tell you of one or two anecdotes which okay. I won't. Are a bit libelous about how people have got gigs. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, um, mm. I want to do, um, mm. you know. Uh, um, mm. We've got quite a lot this year, and mm. not as much as we should have, so I'm going to concentrate on trying to get stuff for that. So I'd say those are the sort of two main things. And I do quite a lot of solo gigs, yes. which I like yes. doing. In fact, last time I played here, I think, was solo. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoy the solo thing, actually, mm. much more than I thought I would, right. mm. because of the lack of responsibility. Yeah. Mm. You know, you don't have to worry about... I mean, I do... And, of course, John yeah. Williams, you see. I've done yeah. a duo with John Williams for... Yeah. Mm. 10 years yeah. and now we've got a third guitar player Gary Ryan wonderful guitar player but um, we're playing tomorrow night in fact. Oh, yes you're in Falmouth tomorrow night yeah. aren't you yeah. <coughs> and, hang on I'm just going to have a swig of my <coughs> and John that, that neatly takes me in while you're swinging your tea to, to just um, <laughs> Lars is waving a, a bottle of cough mixture at us yeah yeah yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 man, no cough mix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it comes on me occasionally. It's but it, it neatly brings me into asking about these two guitars. Yes, you've got okay. With you. Well, the well, two, two guitars. I've tell got. me about this one. Well, this one is the Fret King John Etheridge model. Right. Okay. And um, designed by Trevor Wilkinson mm. and me. Yeah. It's basically. Um, Basically, the shape is the shape they've got, the Elise shape, but uh, mm. I specified, I mean, the, the pickups are, are really nice, it's a great sound. Mm. Um, I wanted the ebony board, right. quite a wide, deep mm. fingerboard that mm. I like, because I've got a big hand, see? Yeah. Well. So that big hand, yeah. I can fit it in here yeah. nicely. That's my excuse for never playing guitar, because my hands are too big, but sorry. Exactly, well, yeah. it's true, yeah. they are, that's, my hands are too big for the guitar. Yeah. yeah. 
So quite often I found simple chords down here really hard to play because right. my hands are so big. Okay. So and it's a beautiful guitar, this, and it's, I, I love it. I like did the we did the color and we, you know, Trevor came up with this idea of this strings actually go it's, through the body, which really gives extra nice. sustain. It's lovely, it's really nice. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> they've all got this thing where, which which right. this knob which goes. Mm -hmm from single coil gradually to humbucking sound. So there's a okay. real range of sounds, and it's got a beautifully rich sound. Gosh, mm. So I, I'm very happy with them, and I think they've done quite well, because it's an attractive, mm. very attractive thing. And then this one is um, the Martin Booth, which I've had for about, oh, well over 10 years now, mm. which is, see it's got the arm, it's like a yeah. stra Stratocaster type arm, if you look under there. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> two Seymour Duncans, mm. um, solid. Mm. I do actually really like, mm. this is why I, I, I really do like the, the semi-acoustic yeah, style. Yeah. That. Mm. And, and the block here goes to about, mm. I'm not sure where it goes, I think it goes to about there. So you've got, mm. you see, a lot of, there's a big variation mm. between uh, guitars like this where the block goes all the way through, yeah. mm. or some of them, and there, sometimes they go to about there, mm. <coughs> and it influences the kind of kind mm. of sound and mm. how much feedback you get. Mm. So I think that's about there. Anyway, it's lovely, and this, of course, is totally solid. Yeah. Mm. So things like this soft machine gig is a bit more because I can get it, and, and of course the the arm. Yeah. Mm. But I've played this guitar for mm. yeah a number of years, and Martin mm. Booth is a maker mm. in Suffolk. Sure. Yeah. And. Um, he makes these really, I mean, really top line, top of the range guitars. John, I've just, just got to say, um, you know, thank you so much for taking time out and a very, very busy schedule. That's a when very, you're, it's a very, very busy schedule. I like a very <laughs> busy, he's taken time out from his very busy schedule. He's got and a cup the, of tea, he's got to finish his tea. <laughs> and, and in the middle of doing a, a fantastic amount of promotion too. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but... John, it's been, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure well, talking you, to you. Thanks a lot. I, I really have enjoyed it. Thanks and thank you so much for your time. That's all right.